Amen. So please join with me in a moment of centering prayer. Gracious and Holy One, we give thanks that You are our Heavenly Father. And we give thanks that You understand and that You are there for us no matter what. May Your Holy Spirit continue to fill this sanctuary and allowing us to continue to walk with You in the cool breeze of the afternoon. It is in Christ's name we pray and we say, Amen. Amen. So, it is not easy to be the new one in the garden, no matter how bountiful or how beautiful the garden is, which is one of the reasons why the work of Women with a Mission and the work of St. Lucas United Church of Christ is so meaningful. Because being an immigrant, or being a refugee, or being a recent transplant to the St. Louis area is not easy. Being a refugee, being an immigrant, being a transplant can involve great anxiety, incredible loneliness, and a lot and a lot of fear. So when we, as St. Lucas United Church of Christ, collectively answered the call to gather items for people we never met, it had profound and very great significance. Because doing so was a way for us as a church to say, you are not alone. God is with you. And to say, let us walk together in the cool breeze of the afternoon. So this morning, today as a church, we have an opportunity to collectively walk through something that is called the narrative lectionary, which is something that you may be hearing for the very first time. And by walking through the narrative lectionary, what is going to take place is we are all going to hear and experience to, together how the stories of our spiritual ancestors are interconnected and how all the stories of our spiritual ancestors are actually way more relatable than we may have ever realized. So today, we start in the garden. God has created from chaos. God has used words to turn dark waters into light and land, sea monsters and swans. And then in Genesis chapter 2, we watch as God gets down into the mud and God gets God's hands dirty. God scoops into the rich red earth and out of clay forms the very first human being. And then Genesis tells us in an act of the most wonderful, intimate form of love, God breathes God's own breath into the airways of Adam. What that means is that the air of God, the breath of God that was able to bring forth the gifts of Genesis and moved across the waters is now coursing through the lungs and the veins of each and every one of us who are sitting here today. And then, in an exquisite act of architecture, God creates Eve with incredible attention and care. And you may or may not know this, but there is more time spent in the Bible describing how Eve is created than how Adam is created. Genesis 1 teaches us how words have the ability to create. Genesis 2 reminds us that we are wonderfully and intimately made by our heavenly parent. But, but as any parent, as any auntie, as any grandfather knows, 
whenever you are blessed to have a child, you are also destined to experience heartbreak. And heartbreak is exactly what takes place in chapter 3. Eve and Adam are in the garden. Like immigrants or like refugees, they are in a brand new place. So we should be really graceful and understanding that perhaps they don't fully get the culture. Perhaps they don't fully understand all of the rules. And so they do what they do. And they taste this brand new fruit. But in my opinion, it is what happens next that makes this story so tragic. Because as we just heard in verse 8, Adam and Eve hear God walking in the garden during the cool breeze of the afternoon. And what do they do? They hide. This Adam, who has God's breath within his belly, this Eve who was artfully made by the greatest architect of all time, what is it they do? They make a tragic mistake and then the result is they hide. And what really makes this so, so sad is if you read the original Hebrew, there is the assumption that implies that this walk with God and Adam and Eve in the garden in the cool breeze of the afternoon was something that actually took place on a day-to-day -day basis. This divine stroll was something that God absolutely loved to do. And anyone who lived in Palestine would know that what the author just described was the most pleasant time of the day. This is the time of the day in which the breeze from the sea flows across the land and it replaces the stifling air that had been rising off the earth all day. So here we have God, our Heavenly Father, who is ready to share the most pleasant part of the entire day with God's beloved children. And what do Eve and what do Adam do? They hide. Because of anxiety, because of shame, because of the choices they have made, they hide. And God says, where are you? And one of the beautiful things about Scripture is rarely do the authors ever tell us exactly how these words are said. So we have to use our creative imagination. So one of the questions we get to ask is, how did God say these words, where are you? Did God say, where are you? With a deep and booming voice. Did God say these words with extreme rage? Did God say the words, where are you? With the anxiety of a parent who may have lost their child at the St. Louis Zoo. Or did God say the words, where are you? with the heartbreak of a parent who has witnessed their child being hurt or experienced their child doing something that has so disappointed their parental heart. In the cool breeze of the afternoon, God steps into the garden for a daily walk with Adam and Eve and they hide. And it is so absolutely heartbreaking because what that means is their relationship has forever changed. What it means is that wonderful relationship has now been broken. The Garden of Abundance is now a place where God has experienced His heart being broken for the very first time. You know, how often do we think about that? How often do we think about the hurt or the heartbreak that God goes through? How often do we think how the God who created with words, how the God who crafted us with hands, the God who breathed into us and used architecture to create us, 
could experience pain and heartbreak. But if God is to be real, and if we are to really truly have a relationship with God, we have to be aware that God feels too. And so perhaps it's not the whole eating the apple thing that made God really upset. But perhaps it's the fact that even Adam felt it was best to hide from God when they simply could have turned to God. They could have reached out to God. They could have been honest. And they could have still taken their daily stroll through the garden during the cool breeze of the afternoon. The garden. That's where Genesis takes place. And the garden is also where unfortunate mistakes are made that get in the way of those daily strolls through the cool breezes of the afternoon. The garden. But that is also what makes the resurrection so important. Although we are beginning our narrative journey, it is good for us to be reminded of where our narrative journey is going to be taking us. And as the Gospel of John chapter 20 tells us, on the Sunday after the crucifixion at an empty tomb in a garden, what do we experience? Mary Magdalene hears the voice of our Master. And what does Mary Magdalene do? Instead of hiding from the voice, she responds. The Gospel of John does the most wonderful thing because the Gospel of John brings us right back to a place and a time in which we are once again in the presence of the Holy. And no matter what sadness or no matter what anxiety or no matter what fear Mary Magdalene may be feeling at that moment, when the Lord calls out her name, She turns and she responds. And all she wants to do is hold on. So Genesis 3 shows how we break God's heart by hiding when all God wants to do is walk with us. But the Gospel of John chapter 20 shows how we are the brokenhearted ones And how the Lord comes to us with love and gentleness and another chance to get it right and to live again. And that beloved hymn, that beloved hymn that I know so many of us love to sing, that says, I come to the garden alone and He walks with me and He talks with me And He tells me I am His own. And the love we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Church, can we get an amen? Amen. 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 You know, I come to the garden alone. It is such a classic and such an absolutely beautiful hymn because it is a beautiful testimony. It is a beautiful testimony that reminds us that no matter what we have done, no matter what we have gone through, no matter what tragic and foolish and silly mistakes we have made throughout the week, we do not have to hide from God. No matter what levels of anxiety we endure, no matter the sadness we experience, we are not alone. We can always turn to God. We can always turn to our Creator and we can always say, Here I am, Lord. And God is more than happy to walk with us in the cool breeze of the afternoon just as God had always intended. And for that, I believe we can say, Amen. Amen.